What's happening? Everybody stay calm. What's the Everybody procedure, everyone? Calm. What's the procedure? Stay calm! Wait, 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 wait. Everybody just calm down! Welcome to the madhouse! <laughs> Yes, ladies and gentlemen, that is right. We are back with another episode of East versus West. I'm your host, Anthony. With me, as always, is my co-host, Eddie from Edutainment. How's and it going? We are back with another announcement this week with uh, the finally announced um, Killer Clowns from Outer Space, the one I've been waiting for since last year. I'm very excited to see this maze come to life, um, this movie come to life. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the maze. I'm going to read you some tweets for what John Murdy said will be in the maze of what you'll be seeing as you go through it, at least in Hollywood. Uh, give our thoughts on the maze and the final verdict and all, the usual setup. So we're going to start a little bit about um, just kind of the initial reaction and when you saw it, Eddie. What, what did you think? Um, <clears throat> a lot of people have called it the worst secret because uh, <laughs> you guys had pictures leak a long time ago of, of like the tent tops. So we kind of knew it was coming and it, it was kind of following in the same lines as uh, trick or treat uh, did really well last year in uh, at Orlando, but I'm excited for it, man. I, I really, I like this property. I, I had a really good time last year in the scare zone. So I'm really looking forward to, to walking through that, that circus tent, seeing some of those cotton candy cocoons and whatnot. It's going to be fun. So I've been talking to the composer of the film, John Mazzari, on Instagram because um, we've been trying to set up something with the podcast pretty soon, hopefully get him on. But, uh, yeah, he was saying that, you know, um, you know, he, he's, I, I, you know, I brought up the fact that, wow, this is actually happening, this is coming true and stuff like that and stuff like that. And, he, and he's kind of excited for it to be coming too, uh, being that he did the original music for the movie. Um, but he, later on when that trailer did come out, he remastered the trailer with his music and I thought it sounded way better, and I wish Universal would go and use that one because it just sounds, like, too cool and stuff like that. But I'm very excited to see um, a lot of the stuff that will be in this maze from the movie and stuff like that and what we uh, can walk through and hopefully expect through it. I'm going to read you a little bit of what John Murdy said on Twitter when this got announced, uh, and it goes as follows. The circus has come to town. At least that's what, we, that's what the unsuspecting citizens of Crescent Cove think when they discover a mysterious big top uh, has been erected in the middle of an empty forest on the outskirts of town. But it doesn't take long for the residents of the sleepy California suburb to discover the true nature of the big top and its uh, nefarious deeds taking place inside of it. The circus big top is actually an alien spaceship housing an army of killer clowns from outer space. Welcome to Killer Clowns from Outer Space, a new maze inspired by the 1988 film that became a cult classic. You'll venture inside the Killer Clowns of Spaceship and discover the refrigerator room where the clowns are storing their human prey inside cotton candy cocoons. Next, you'll venture into the community of Crescent Cove and discover the Killer Clowns' uh, nefarious plot to abduct the locals and dismantle their law enforcement. Uh, law enforcement. Finally, you'll wind up at... A closed amusement park, the perfect place for the Killer Clowns to hide the nerve center of their operation. Featuring a classic retro 80s fill, Killer Clowns from Outer Space will leave, will have you screaming and laugh, laughing to death. So that's basically a little uh, kind of what will a little preview of what we'll be seeing into the um, in the in the in the maze. So he did a Q and A right after and asked a bunch of questions and stuff like that. And he asked you know fans what you know just about the new announcement and stuff. He said we'll be seeing, um, of course, the the last clown, which is Clownzilla at the very end, the big king clown. Um, so we'll probably be seeing something like that. I hope it's kind of pretty good production value with that. Um, he did confirm we're going to be going through the ending sequence of them going into the fun house and that whole sequence and stuff. That's actually a freaking awesome scene, and I can't wait to walk through that. I've always kind of figured what it would be like to walk through that because it looked wacky and fun and just all out like a fun house. Uh, he also confirmed we'll be going through, of course, uh, the opening se sequence of them 
uh, going through the uh, the spaceship. So we'll probably be like the two main characters walking through the spaceship, looking at everything and stuff like that. We'll also go through Crescent Cove, of course, where the, the town takes place. Uh, we're going to be seeing all the mayhem and anarchy that they cause there from hopefully the store scene where they go through the store and they're causing all the stuff to the Big Top Burger where they go and uh, the clown spreads, the, of course, the popcorn inside the trash can. Uh, to the you know the big hammer and everything to hopefully uh, the, the the clown march when they're marching down the street and they're just invading houses taking people putting them in balloons and cotton candy cocoons um, uh, he did confirm we'll see of course the t-rex scene in the movie where uh, if you guys are familiar with the movie there's a scene where the clown comes a, to a bus stop and all these people are watching him and stuff and he puts on a show with uh, you know different stuff with his hands you know he does like a pilgrimage one he does like a, a like a hula girl one and he does of course the famous one is the um, the T-Rex where he swallows the people and grabs them which was pretty cool um, another scene I would love to see would be of course the um, infamous knock your block off scene which I think they will pull off uh, when the clown comes into the alley and punches the biker die and his head just gets uh, punched off, which I thought was cool. Um, so there's a lot of stuff I want to see in this in this maze. Like that's pretty much the whole movie. And I think with a lot of the iconic iconic scenes that they have in this ma in this movie, I think we'll get a lot of little brief uh, mentions of them, of course, in the maze. So you're saying you want to see the whole movie? Yeah, from start <laughs> to finish. I want I want the house to be about an hour and forty five minutes running. <laughs> yeah, runtime hour forty five minutes. Uh, I'll walk through it. Yeah, no, but <clears throat> this year seems like it's going to be the year of puppetry. Yeah, uh, because with like Clownzilla and then with them doing all all these like different houses. Also, the, you got the Demi Dogs and Stranger Things. Uh, you have Ghostbusters with uh, what's his name? Um, now I forget his Slimer. name. Slimer. No, uh, well, Slimer too, but the Stay Puft Marshmallow. Guy. Yeah, the Stay Puft Marshmallow guy. Um, all these things are going to be like it's going to make it the year of puppetry. But this is one of the ones that I'm looking forward to. I can't wait. I, I, I wonder where they're going to put it. I mean, in in our park, it would make sense to put it around uh, Springfield, just because that's where they always put the clowns. But I, w I wonder if they're going to be able to fit it back there. Um, the the scene that I want to really see is is the one that you were saying the knock your block off. I, I want to see that, and I want to see also them doing the the like it's like the shadow hands or whatever that you were talking about at yeah. the at the bus stop. Yeah, yeah, those are the two scenes that really always stuck out to me in the movie. Um, and last year we actually got to see some of that in the scare zone. So Definitely. to see it in the house, and then just see how they pull off the cocoons and everything that we're going to be walking through. And the initial opening scene when they walk into the spaceship there. Yeah. Um, yeah. That This house is going to be amazing. I mean, last year, Killer Clowns did not let down. It actually stole the show. So I have a feeling this one's going to do pretty well as well. So, yeah, let, let's talk a little bit about that. So talk to us a little bit about your experience with, of course, it being a scare zone last year. Now, it was in a very small area. But from what I've seen in every video that I've watched, it was the most popular scare zone of the event last year. It took the event by storm. Um, which was honestly going to be a given of how popular this movie is and stuff like that. It even got people from my side of the coast to actually travel out there just to go see that scare zone. Tell us a little bit about um, what they did with such little space and how they made it such an iconic scare zone. What now, obviously, we're getting it as a maze this year, so it must it must have been it must have done something right. Yeah. So the the first thing I could say about it is the scare zone was set in such a way that you actually had to kind of go out of your way to cross through it yeah. because if you've ever been to Universal Studios in Florida, if you go, you could actually just turn right and go in a circle and do all the houses. You don't have to cross through the middle where the, the Killer Clown scare zone was um, unless you're going to go like ride Transformers. But if you're just going for like the haunted houses or you're trying to get them all done, there's a high likelihood that you may not even pass through that scare zone, but people were going out of their way to, to go through there. And they had... It was it was jam packed with clowns, great music. So like you couldn't walk through there and not see clowns. Like you know, sometimes you'll go to go through a scare zone and you'll go through a cast change or something like that. Yeah. So you'll you'll miss a few of the of the characters. In in this case, there wasn't a time that I passed through there and didn't see it jam packed with clowns. Uh, they they had the clowns walking around with the, um, the balloon animals. Yeah. Um, Those are cool. Which, I saw that. Yeah, which was hilarious. And then the balloon animal would occasionally like pop, scare people that were passing by with with the noise, and the clown would like get really sad 
like oh, oh, this yeah but people were going over there to just party too like just go over there and dance with the clowns i know a couple of people probably mess with the with the characters too but hopefully they kept that under control i didn't see any issues with it but yeah it was it was a a, a scare zone that was out of it out of the way yeah but people were going out of their way to actually go check it out and i enjoyed it a lot i mean it had the the um it, it's like an ice cream truck oh yeah the uh <laughs> the uh the brothers ice cream truck they're they're hilarious in that movie uh, yeah the, the Karenzi brothers i believe their names were um, yeah and yeah they, they were running around and stuff like that which was funny um yeah, I, I really enjoyed a lot of the aspects they brought to life in such a small scare zone. The, the other thing I liked that was really cool, and, and you don't really see this a lot at haunts, was the clowns were actually going out of their way and letting guests take pictures with them and stuff like that because of how cool they looked. And I thought that was just – that was – that was really cool of them to do that because I know they have like usually uh, somewhat of a policy where like they got to stay in character so they can't really take pictures. But a lot of the clowns were actually going out of their way and, you know, taking photos and stuff because they know how much this scare zone meant to people, um, you know, fans of the movie and stuff like that. Like, let's be real. You've I, I, I as, as many times as I seen that movie, I've always wanted to see one of those motherfuckers in person just because they look <laughs> so funny and they look so cool that like just standing next to them like. I think I'd be as tall as them or stuff like that, which it would be fun to do just to just to kind of stand next to them or just get like a whole group picture of all of them with me in the middle and stuff like that'd be so fucking bitching. Yeah. And, and their their uh, costumes were spot on. They looked amazing. Um, yeah, but they, they definitely were there for like taking pictures. I'm I'm a I'm, I'm one of those guys who doesn't mind taking pictures, but I don't want it disrupting. Yeah, so I, I, I kind of I, I try to hope that they lean away from having that like a uh, photo op friendly scare zone yeah but yeah i definitely took a few pictures in that scare zone <laughs> that, that, that's a fun one so <laughs> steven chioto edward chioto john mazar if you guys are all watching come on to the mindless or podcast i want to talk to you guys about your guys' experience with the orlando scare zone of course what you guys think of it becoming a maze just talk about the movie and stuff like that I have been wanting to interview you guys since I was a wee little kid when I was six years old wanting to steal this movie from my cousins because I didn't have it on DVD myself. And, yeah, this movie meant, means a lot to me. This movie, honestly, was probably some, an important part of my childhood. Um, probably one of the first horror movies I actually ever fell in love with. Um, so, yeah, this movie this movie means a lot to me. This maze is going to mean a lot to me. Um, just this whole experience will probably mean a lot to me. So if you guys are listening out there, the Chioda Brothers and, of course, John Mazzari. Let's get you guys on the podcast. Anyway, um, without... Have all your, your scare zones been announced? All my scare zones have been announced, yes. Okay. I, I was just wondering if there was a chance that uh, Killer Clown's scare zone would be announced. I, I was hoping it was going to, but they have. I haven't heard anything yet unless they're kind of maybe announced at Midsummer Scream, which would be cool. Um, but... As far as right now, I haven't heard anything about it, so we'll we'll see what happens in the future. But uh, with all my my nonsense and all my hopes and dreams aside, um, let's you know let's just let's wrap this up. What, what what do we think about this? What do we are we excited for it or what are we looking forward to? Oh yeah, absolutely. So this one was one that I started I started speculating and I wanted to come immediately after walking through it opening night last year. Um, it, there's just so much in this movie and so much from the scare zone that I could see translating really well into a, an actual haunt that we could walk through. And uh, er, there's so many people that have the, the fear of clowns. So this is going to be scary for a lot of people. Um, on top of that, you know, it's, it's one of those that's a, a cult classic. So it's going to bring a, a whole crowd of like true hardcore fans, you know, that would hopefully balance out the fans that are coming for Ghostbusters and Stranger Things for unrelated reasons. You know what I'm saying? Because this is like true horror movie. Even if it's a little bit funny, it's a true horror movie. Cult classic. So the, the fans coming for this are the true fans that Halloween Horror Nights is basically the the their the, the event was built on their backs. Yeah, right? definitely. So I'm ex really excited for this. I love when this style of house comes to the event. Um, and I, I knew immediately that this was going to be the one that stole the show for you because last yeah. year you were really good. <laughs> this one was – this is the one I've been waiting for. When they announced Ghostbusters, I wasn't upset, but I was just expecting Killer Clowns only because it's just been – you know, we've been seeing the pictures and everything, construction updates and everything. But, you know, 
having an event like we have so far, the mazes look like they're going to be great. It looks like they're going for a, a totally 80s vibe out here in Hollywood. And I, and I couldn't be more happy about that because the 80s just fucking rule. Even though I wasn't born in them, I, from what I've seen and what I've watched and what I've heard, it's just they, they, they rule. Um, no question about it. But, you know, you got, a, you got a movie like Killer Clowns from Outer Space, which, you know, when it came out, it wasn't a big major, you know, release. Not a lot of people knew about it. And as it got older, it became this cult classic where everyone just knew about it because I, I think – it has heavily to do two things that I think makes that movie that movie. The way the clowns look was like I think ahead of its time for when that movie came out. Um, they looked amazing, and still, still this day, they don't look cheesy. They they actually look good. I actually I enjoy that and stuff like that. And I want to say the second part is because of the music of that movie. Now the music actually brings the the film to life. It it actually uh, really you know builds up the suspense or you know you know builds up the next scene or something like that uh on top of that you got that title track killer clowns by the dickies the uh infamous 70s punk band from out here in la um they they did the song for it it's a phenomenal song it's one of my favorite songs i actually listen to that at work a lot or just when i'm driving or whatever but you have a song like killer clowns from outer space uh the title track and stuff like that from the dickies and um of course like i said you have the amazing music composed by john mazari you have this film that they, they all came together, created, and it, it, it's gone down in history as one of the greatest horror movies of all time. So I, I there's a lot I want to see in this maze. Um, they're going to have to sum up an hour and 45-minute movie into like five short minutes. And and John Murdy, he can do it. Um, uh, same thing out there in Orlando. I think they can do it as well because this, honestly, I mean, there's a lot of f- scenes that like diehard fans like you know us love. And I think that both coasts won't disappoint in their houses. Yeah, and the, the message from both coasts, from John Murdy and Mike Aiello, was that the fans were the ones that got this one to come back. So I think the, the what we need to take from that is we, we need to vocalize what we, what we want as much as we possibly can because that makes it come to the event. So we need to start talking about it. <laughs> definitely definitely um yeah and john murdy went on twitter saying that he saw this he was like one of the only probably people in at that time that saw this in theaters when it came out uh mike aiello has expressed on twitter how much this movie he means to him how much he loves this movie so you could tell these two gentlemen are very passionate about bringing this uh haunt or you know this maze uh haunted house to uh the event and how much work went into it i mean look at what they did at the orlando last year uh, even when it went down to uh, Midsummer Stream last year, when John Murray teased, just because you guys didn't get it this year, don't mean you didn't get it next year. Perfect example was with Trick or Treat, and John Murray, of course, you know, he he looked like he already had this one planned when Orlando was doing that scare zone. Again, it was probably a test to see how well it would react with audiences out there, and it reacted splendidly with audiences. They loved that scare zone. That was probably the highest rated scare zone every night at the event when they were going on. And look at it now. It's a, it's a maze. So we here at East versus West are very looking, f- very much looking forward to this maze because, uh, I mean, I'm a, I'm a huge diehard fan of that movie. I know Eddie uh, just recently saw it, I think, uh, like last year and stuff like that, and he really enjoyed it too. So um, we're, we're both looking forward to this maze. This has been on the top of my bucket list for some time now, um, and, I'm, and I can't wait to see what they pull off. Yeah, man. Um and I, I, I guess just guys, um, side note, East versus West, we continue to try to put put out content for you guys. It's the only podcast with ha- Halloween Horror Night related content from both coasts. So make sure that you're checking it out. Share it with your friends. Let us know what you guys think. Give us any ideas that you guys want us to you know, talk about because we're, we're open to that as well. Yeah, we're in the process of hopefully making this a weekly show. We've actually been talking it out the last couple of weeks of how we can p- potentially do that um, outside of Horror Nights. I mean, Horror Nights is, of course, how this show got started, and we want to kind of brand it outside of Horror Nights. Um, if it's anything horror-related, of course, it'll probably be on my channel. If it's anything non-horror-related, it'll probably be on Eddie's channel for East versus West. But we want to try to brand it outside of just Horror Nights. I mean, of course, Horror Nights will always be the base of this show of how it started, and it will never go away from that, but... 
Um, we want to try to brand it also outside of Horror Nights and stuff like that. So stay tuned. We have a lot of good stuff for you. Stay tuned for many more announcements. We have a couple more announcements from Halloween Horror Nights coming from both coasts, and we can't wait to break them down, talk about them, and stuff like that. Um, very much looking forward to this year so far. S such a stacked lineup so far, and there's only there's still more to come. Uh, Midsummer Scream, as of this recording, is this Saturday. I will be there. There should be there hopefully an announcement. Murdy's been kind of tweeting that there might be an announcement at Midsummer Scream. So if there is anything to capitalize on that, we'll we'll talk about it. If if it's going to be any announcement, it might be any a, a Hollywood exclusive. I'm not sure yet, or it might be on both coasts. Uh, we'll only find out Saturday. So stay tuned, guys. We have more East versus West coming. We have more content coming. And uh, thank you guys for watching this episode of East versus West. And we will see you guys in the next one. Deuces.